welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing my labor and delivery story. Baby Benji is now 10 days old today. So we're finally getting established into our routine and it's amazing. He's just sleeping behind me right here in this bassinet. So hopefully I can finish filming this video before he wakes up. Um, also, I did do some filming um, on the day that I did give birth. I didn't go crazy into depth, so that's kind of why I'm doing this video. Um, but if you'd like to see the official birth vlog of the video, um, I will leave that in the card up here. Um, and you guys can go check it out. But yeah, let's get into the story of how my son was born. So it all starts off um, September 6th, 2019. <laughs> My brain, baby brain. Um, <laughs> so it starts off on that day. I woke up, I was feeling cramps kind of all of the, the night prior to that. And I woke up at seven and I was like, okay, these cramps are, are bad. But um, as I said in my labor and delivery um, vlog, that I had been experiencing um, cramps and I thought I was in labor twice before, that my water had broke. So I had gone to the, uh, the hospital and twice they told me to go home and that I wasn't in labor. I was like, okay, I'm gonna like lie in bed and I'm going to just see if the cramps are gonna get worse. And I got the app, the labor, um, I think it's called labor signs. And I was timing them to see how far apart they are. Uh, and Jake was supposed to go to work that day. And so I woke him up, he had work at nine and I woke him up at seven and I was like, I think I'm going into labor, but I'm not too sure. Like, I don't know if you should take the day off of work. And so he was like, nope, I'm taking the day off of work. I'd rather be here and care for you um, and help you. So he took the day off and I was like, okay, I better be going into labor. And they were every like five minutes apart, but they weren't that strong. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna go in. And then they completely went away, I think at like nine, they went away and I was like, oh great, like I told him not to go into work and now I don't have, like I'm not in labor. So I was kind of upset and was kind of kicking myself, but then at 10, they started to pick up again. I called my mom and I was like, okay, so this is like what they're at, they're not like that painful and so I don't really want to go in. And she was like, okay, how far apart are they? And at that point they had started to pick up from like every five minutes and they were really sporadic. Like one, they'd be like every minute or every two minutes or every six minutes, every eight minutes. So it was all over the place. But I called my mom and my mom's like, no, if you're getting them and they're consistent, just go in, check it out. She's like, why haven't you left for the hospital basically? Like, okay, let's go, let's you know pack up all of our bags and, and let's go for the third time to labor assessment. So we're driving and this is when I started filming for the birth vlog. Um, and I remember saying, I'm really disappointed if I go there and they tell me that I'm not in labor. So finally, we get to the hospital. So we go into labor assessment and they get me in right away and they check me and they're like, nope, you are still two centimeters. The week prior to that, which was like probably a couple days um, before, they checked me at my doctor's appointment and they determined that I was two centimeters dilated. When I went into labor assessment a couple days later, I was still two centimeters dilated. So they're like, okay, get up, walk around. Oh, my mucus plug had also come out um, the night before. And it was like still continuing to come out. And so they're like, okay, get up. I'm gonna tell you to walk around for two hours and then come back here. And um, let's see if you, if you progress. So I was like, okay, cool. So I'm walking around, walking around, walking around for two hours, go back to the desk. And I was like, hey, I walked around for two hours, contractions are more painful now, check me again. And that night at the hospital was a very busy night at the hospital and they had no beds for me. I kid you not, there was a girl like on the stairs beside me, like full on in active labor, like giving birth on the stairs. And they couldn't give her a bed. And so they were like, um, uh, we really don't have a bed for you. So I'm gonna tell you to walk around for another hour and then come back. So we walk around some more, we go get something to eat. I was like walking up and down the stairs of the hospital. We walked all around the hospital. I know like the whole floor plan of that hospital. Finally, at 6 p.m., we go back. And I was like, okay, do you have a bed for me? She was like, yes, we do, come in. I was like, awesome. And she checks me and she goes, 
Okay, you're only a two and a half centimeters dilated. After three hours of walking, so she goes, this is not what I would have wanted. I would have wanted more. And in order to get accepted into the birthing suites, you need to be at least four centimeters dilated. Oh, and your contractions need to be every two to three minutes apart. So I didn't meet the cr criteria. So I was like, oh, I'm just, they're gonna tell me to go home. She goes, I'm gonna check with the OB and we're gonna see what the, they think the plan should be. The OB didn't even come back, but another nurse came back and she was like, okay, cool, here are your admission forms, sign them. And I was like, wait, we're getting admitted? And she was like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you're, you're getting admitted into the birthing suites. So I was like, okay, cool, sweet. So they moved me into the birthing suite and I'm sitting there waiting for my mom to come. My mom comes and they check me and I am three centimeters dilated. And I'm progressing really slow. And so they're like, okay, we're gonna see if you start progressing faster. If not, we're gonna have to break your water for you. And so I'm sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, still three centimeters dilated. And so they're like, okay, we're gonna break your water for you. And then it's gonna progress things a lot faster. And the doctor was so busy, there was like, three patients in front of me that needed to have babies. And then she had a C-section that she needed to go into, which was an emergency C-section. And so it took like hours for her to come in and break my water. Eventually she comes in and she breaks my water, one in the morning, two in the morning I wanna say. And so she breaks my water and she's like, okay, now the contractions are gonna be coming fast and hard. And she's like, you sure you don't want an epidural? I was like, no, it's okay, I got this, I got this, this is cool. I'm strong, mind over matter. 10 minutes later, I was begging for the epidural. I was like, oh my God. And I remember telling Jake, if I ask for the epidural in the room, make sure that I really, really want it before you just like give it to me. And so he was like, okay. So I literally, the contractions were coming. They were so painful. I couldn't speak. I was like moaning. I was like mooing like a freaking cow. And I got so scared. <laughs> And I was like, nope, need the epidural. Give me the freaking epidural. And my mom and Jake were like, no, like I don't really think that you know you want it. And I was like, no, I want it. I remember swearing at them, being like, give me the epidural. The guy comes in to do my epidural and it didn't hurt at all. Like the the needle to freeze hurt and it was like a stinging, it felt like a bee sting that lasted like 10 seconds and then it was gone. And then there was pressure in my back while he like put the the epidural in. Once the epidural settled, they put a catheter in me because I wouldn't be able to feel anything down there. And then it took about 20 minutes for the epidural to kick in. And then once it kicked in, let me tell you, that thing is amazing. I've said it in my birth vlog and I'll say it here. The epidural or whoever created it is amazing. They need a hug, they need a kiss. It's so great. And so I was so relaxed after that, I was able to fall asleep. I was able to just relax and chill. It felt so good. However, I was still progressing very slow. Kept coming in, they kept checking me every two hours. And they were like, oh, like you're maybe like another half a centimeter dilated. It got time to be like eight in the morning the next day. And they were like, okay, you're still not dilated. So I think we're gonna need to put you on um, oxycodone or something. I think that's what they put me on. And that was supposed to like kickstart the labor. Oh, a point I forgot to mention. The whole night, my epidural kept wearing off. It was, every time I'd go on my right side, I'd feel like sharp shooting pains in my lower left like stomach, so bad. And I was like, oh, I don't think this epidural's working. And I kept saying, don't put me on my right side because that's when it starts to hurt. I need to be on my left side. But the nurse is like, no, the baby likes it the most when you're on your right side and that's, actually when you start progressing the most is when you're on your right side. She was like, oh, it's probably a groin problem that like the epidural doesn't even want to cover. I kept having to re-up. You're allowed to re-up twice every hour. And since I felt everything, I was like, mm. I kept pressing that button twice every hour. I was like, this is freaking painful. I already have the epidural, might as well re-up. I kept re-upping to a point where my right leg was so numb, it literally took like a day for me to gain strength back in that leg because I re-upped a lot, not proud of it. Actually, whatever, I was in pain. I did what I did. Anyways, so then they come in and they're like, okay, we're gonna hook you up to the oxycodone and we're gonna get the, your contractions started. Oh, like you're at a nine, but 
you're not quite out of 10. Like, I don't really feel comfortable for you to push right now. And another couple hours went by and she comes in. She goes, okay, now you're maybe like a 9 to a 10. I was like, oh my god, I just want it to be done. I remember breaking down crying. There's like one clip in the birth vlog where I'm just like... I'm like, my nose is red, I'm crying, and I'm just so done with it. It was 28 hours of labor that I was in. I was so done at that point. And so finally she comes in and she goes, okay, you're, you're a 10. Do you have the urge to push? And I was like, no. She's like, do you feel pressure? I was like, no. She goes, okay, let me know when you feel pressure. She leaves. Half an hour later, I'm sitting there, I'm like, uh, still don't really feel the pressure. And she comes back in, she goes, okay, you wanna do some practice pushes? I was like, okay, cool, sure. So I started pushing. I pushed for about an hour and 15 minutes. And um, she's like, oh, like you're doing a great job, like he's coming, whatever. And I remember her saying, do you want to touch the head? Like once the head started to come out, she's like, do you wanna to touch it? She's like, you'd be the first one to touch it. And I mean, that's kind of beautiful, but I was, at that point I was like, ugh, that's gross. <laughs> Like you just saw like a little like, cause he has black hair, right? So I, you saw like a little like head with black hair and it was like mucusy. I was like, mm. I was like, no thanks. I don't really want to touch that. <laughs> I probably should have, I kind of regret it. But like, I was like, oh, I really don't want to. His head starts to come out and she's like, okay, we're ready for the doctor to come in. So she like calls the nurse whenever she goes, okay, I'm ready for delivery. And the nurse is like, uh, doctor's in another delivery right now. And apparently that delivery had complications and he like needed to be in there cause like the baby was like, wasn't doing well. But my nurse was like, oh my God, she's delivering right now. And the nurse kept saying like, okay, like stop pushing. I was like, I'm, I'm literally pushing. Like I'm not, it, my body's just doing it. And his head starts to come out and his head like fully comes out. She's like, okay. I'm gonna need to deliver this baby. So my nurse actually delivered the baby, not the doctor. Which I don't even know if it's, I don't know if that's allowed or if like, the worst comes to worst, they like, if they have to deliver, like they deliver the baby. Anyways, so then his head comes out and then after his head comes out, a little like arm like pops out. And apparently that's a really bad sign. And so a nurse runs in, there's a whole bunch of commotion going around me. A nurse runs into the room to help my nurse and she sees the hand sticking out and she goes, oh shit. And she runs out of the room. And I'm like, oh my God, what's happening? Is my baby okay? Why is everyone freaking out? And so my nurse is like grabbing his head and like twisting it. And like my mom and Jake were so concerned. They thought that his head would be ripped off of his body. Like this nurse was going hard on my freaking son's head. She was like, and then she, I remember her like sticking her hand in and like grabbing him and, and like trying to squeeze him out. He came out shoulders first. Well, I guess like head first, but they called it a shoulder birth, which apparently is extremely painful for the mom because it's the widest part of the body. And let me just say, my vagina is definitely still recovering. It was so freaking painful. And I, they just kept saying, push, push. And I, everyone was, oh, God, it was so traumatic. So eventually, like, he comes out and they, like, take him out. And they, like, go and, like, clean him off and they put him on my chest or whatever. He starts crying. Everything's fine. And I'm like, okay, like, it's done. And then they're like, okay, time to deliver the afterbirth, like, the placenta and all of that. That was so painful there was literally a nurse like standing over top of me like with her full body weight like at like pushing on my belly and I just remember being like whoa I did not expect this like my aunt told me delivering the placenta like felt good mm -mm, definitely didn't feel good it hurt and they're like sitting there and they're like trying to like, yank it out TMI sorry guys so finally it comes out and then the doctor comes in, he goes, oh, sorry, I missed the birth. And he's like going over the nurse, okay, what did you do? What were your procedures? And she's like, oh, I did like a corkscrew something. I don't even know what, I don't even know. And the doctor turns to like the like the student that he was training at the time and he goes, corkscrew? I never would have done the corkscrew. And I remember hearing that being like, are you freaking, like, why would you say that in front of me? Like, I'm emotional. Why would you be like, I never would have done that? 
Like what, like why? Why wouldn't you? The doctor sits there, stitches me up. Yeah, and then that was it. And then they weighed him and they did his reflex test. And um, yeah, and then they latched him on. He latched pretty well right away. I did my skin to skin time. Jake did his skin to skin time. And we stayed in that room for another two hours before they moved us over to the recovery room. And then once in the recovery room, everyone came in and visited. And, and I stayed in that room for another, um, I think it was like 20, 27 hours I stayed in that room. And then we were able to go home. But that was my traumatic story. It uh, definitely was not what I was expecting, 28 hours. And not to mention, I was getting Braxton Hicks contractions for about a month before that happened. So. My whole labor took a very long time, um, but he's honestly, he's so precious. He's so amazing. We love him. He smells so great. And uh, it was definitely worth it. And I kind of already want another baby. <laughs> he's 10 days old and I'm like, mm, I want another one. Although recovery guys, I'm gonna film a video on recovery. I'm still going through it. Obviously it's only been 10 days. It is rough. And I ran into problem upon problem upon problem. I'm just gonna show you him really quick. Here he is, guys. Say hi, Benjamin. Say hi. Okay, bye bye. See you in the next video. Hey, I'm hungry. Feed me, mom. What you doing?